you know, sometimes it uh, just feels good to hold the cup. Ever since we started these little broadcasts during the day, I've been talking about the cup of hope and uh, how that cup of hope just, uh, I know, gives me the strength just to, to try to take each day as a time and hope that uh, the cup of hope is something that uh, you can share too. You know, I, uh, I remember when I took my first communion back in junior high and the, all the focus on what communion means, and I think communion is such a universal thing. It's not just about being Christian, it's about being human. But the whole focus was that when you take communion, what happens to the wine, what happens to the bread, and it's different for Lutherans, Catholics, Methodists, Presbyterians, and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, really long after I came here, and even though we're a relatively small church, we're a very diverse church, I realized that the cup of hope and communion is not about what happens to the bread and wine. It's about what happens to our soul and spirit inside. I mean, bread and wine is bread and wine. But when you share it, then we have the words of a humble carpenter. It ignites something inside of me, and it makes me feel united with the, the human community. I, just on a, I think it's kind of a funny note. I remember back when Peggy's late husband was with us, and <clears throat> he is a really good Catholic. I mean, he was just so solid in his faith. But he started coming to our church. And week after week, uh, he and Peggy came, and they sometimes brought the grandkids. And I remember, I don't know if it was too long, too long before Mike passed away, I said, you know, Mike, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to retire until you come up and take communion. And he said, well, since I don't want you to retire, I'm not going to take communion. <laughs> and we just had a little laugh about something that is so spiritual and so sacred. And it, I, I'm thinking, too, that uh, we started doing these things three months ago. And it was just, you know, Don, let's have a little thought for the day for a week or two to get us over the hump. Well, <laughs> the hump has lasted three months. And I was thinking, over that three months, and I, if, if it wasn't for the team that is here, this wouldn't happen. Only twice have I pre-recorded it. Because there's something about doing this live. And the two times I pre-recorded it, it just didn't feel right. I, I, I felt like I was staging something and it would be up later. And I, when you do something live, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, if I make a mistake and I made many, if I screw something up, hey, it, it's, it's the way it is. Because when it's live, it's, it's just human. It's the way we live and we're not perfect. I don't know how you handle it when something goes wrong. Like if we have a broadcast here and I don't say something right or, you know, uh, my brother was a really spiritual guy. I just uh, love my brother, Jim. And he loves these broadcasts. Uh, and uh, he sent me a little proverb yesterday. It's a Chinese proverb. This is what it says. It says, he who blames others has a long way to go on his journey. He who blames himself is halfway there. He who blames no one has arrived. <laughs> Love that. He who blames no one has arrived. You know, it's, I was thinking about all the stuff that uh, we've gone through over the past three months. You know, the, the COVID and the injustices that we're talking about lately, the, the random acts of violence and that kind of stuff. And I guess there's a lot of blame to go around. And I know sometimes when something goes wrong in my life or something, and sometimes the first thing you want to focus on is who's to blame for that. But I'm thinking to myself, I don't like to blame. Somehow life is about taking responsibility. Life is about being honest with ourselves about who we are. Life is about understanding that we have all kinds of imperfections and sometimes people see our imperfections and we deal with people who are imperfect and some, it's the ability to look at ourselves with raw honesty and grace and to look at others 
with raw honesty and grace. And maybe that will help us heal as we march through these times that have been tough and will continue to be tough. There's a little passage in Exodus that I thought about where Jesus, well, where the, the author says, you have seen what I did. How I bore you up on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. You know, God sees what I've done. God sees who you are and God sees who I am. And in the midst of all that, God bears us up on eagle's wings. In other words, we can take our souls and our spirit and commend them to God's spirit. And then God brings us to himself. And we are his child. And when you know you're on God's wings, on eagle's wings, and he bears us up and he knows what we've done, it gives us a kind of freedom to accept who we are and maybe to change those things that we can to be a little better person and to help others accept who they are. And maybe by being who we are, we can make them just a little bit better. A lot of things to think about during these times. And I just am honored to spend these moments with you. God bless each one of you. Remember, God holds us up on eagle's wings. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.